Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is David Rooney. I'm the chief film critic at The Hollywood Reporter. And I hope you all enjoyed or had time to watch uh, Every Act of Life, this wonderful celebration of Terence McNally, great playwright, librettist, and indispensable voice of the American theater, who sadly we lost at the end of March to coronavirus complications. But tonight we're here to celebrate his life, his work, and the activism that was embedded in every pore of his art. Um, we have a wonderful panel here to help us do a deep dive. Um, let's start with Jeff Kaufman, the director of this and several other excellent documentaries. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, David. Thanks for hosting. How are you doing? How are you holding up? I'm holding up fine. I'm just very glad to be here with you and Tom and Cheetah and Tony. Nice to be able to celebrate someone that really merits it. Um, special people. Yeah. So, you know, the next people we have to do that are two incredible interpreters of McNally's work, two great ladies of Broadway, Tyne Daly and Cheetah Rivera. Um, Tyne was a, played Maria Callas in a Broadway revival in 2011 of a beautiful Broadway revival of Masterclass. And then uh, in 2014, she played Catherine Gerard in Mothers and Sons, which uh, was a new encounter, a fresh encounter with a character that we had first met in Terence's television drama, Andre's Mother, um, in 1990. Um, and a character I think that was very significant to a lot of people um, because that, that first play helped so many people put a face to the AIDS crisis, put a voice to it, humanized it, told it with compassion, and also I think helped a lot of uh, parents of LGBTQ children um, accept them, understand them better. Um, so that was a great legacy to carry on with that play. Um, and then Cheetah Rivera, what can I say? A legend needs no introduction um, <laughs> and an epic, epic collaboration with Terrence McNally over so many shows, um, beginning with The Rink, continuing with Kiss of the Spider Woman, her stage memoir, Cheetah Rivera, The Dancer's Life, um, and The Visit, the final Candor and Epp musical to play Broadway. Um, and last but certainly not least, I'm so thrilled to welcome uh, Tom Kirdahi, uh Terence's husband, the man so warmly identified in the film as the love of his life, and uh, also his producer for the last decade or so on many works, including Mothers and Sons and The Visit, but also Anastasia, um, the massively successful all-star production of It's Only a Play, which ran forever and could not get a ticket for love or money. Um, and also last year, most recently, um, a revival of Frankie and Johnny and the Claire de Lune with Audrey McDonald and Michael Shannon. And if you just indulge me one more minute, my personal experience of that production, I was out of town when it opened, so I did not see it at opening. I did not get to review it, but I saw it late in the run. And I happened to be seated on the opposite end of the house seat row where Tom and, and Terrence were, were down the other end. So several times during the performance, I found myself just glancing over at Terrence and watching his face glow as he looked up at these actors bringing life to his work, his feelings, his words. And it, it felt such an intimate, privileged thing to observe. And I was, I was really touched by that and touched also to see him at the end of the performance when everybody just flocked around him, all these people showering their love and appreciation uh -huh. on him and he was just beaming. I mean, it was a beautiful moment for me and uh, for someone, someone whose work I'd always admired. Um, a question I'd like to put to all of you to get the ball rolling is, for me, Frankie and Johnny is such a quintessential McNally play in that it's about that burning need for connection in a, in a very lonely world. Um, do you have a personal play or musical among his work, each of you, that you think really encapsulates the essence of Terence McNally, of who he was and who he, he is, given that his art will continue to live on? I. I, I think it's difficult, certainly for me, to say because uh, because he was every single one of those plays that was part of Terrence. Um, I'll never forget. I mean, t Tom just sent me a picture that's really terribly funny because uh, Terrence was always trying to imitate my strange hands, my my, my, you know, physicality. Uh, and he sent me a, a really funny picture of Terrence trying to do this uh, particular motion. And, uh, and I, I just imagined him um, 
imitating me when the two of them got home and they started to laugh about probably some of the things that I was doing and Terrence felt very close to that. I think Terrence really understood every single one of his, his characters that he wrote. Um, I think he understood them to a point where he was them. Um, that's why it was so easy for me to um, speak his words because um, it was if it was as if uh, Terence had known me my entire life, because he spoke um, like I would have spoken, even in in uh, Cheetah, a dancer's life. I mean, that was sort of like an, a, a biography of my or a biography, and it, it was kind of written like I would talk to my brothers and sisters. Well, how did Terence know that? He just felt it from his heart. His, his soul. Um, and he also, Terrence made me feel as though I was really better than I really am. Uh, he made me feel, uh, uh, he made me feel like time as an actress. <laughs> you know what I mean? He made me feel as though I could really act. I wasn't this dancer singer that was, uh, you know, giving style to his work. Uh, he made me feel as though I was this wonderful actress. So I think it, that it's difficult for me to say which one of, of, of his pieces that reminds me the most of Terrence. Does that make any sense at all? Perfect sense, except for the part where you say you don't feel like a real actor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's rubbish. <clears throat> Oh, well, thank you. There's not an actor alive who feels like a real actor. We need to be built up. We need to be held. Yeah. Be encouraged into it. And and Terrence, for me, he loved the team sport. He loved yeah. acting. Yeah. Lots of them. And he and he did lead the cheer and make you feel like you're, you were integral and important to what was going on. And without yeah. you, I can't, I, I, he called all of us his muse. He called Zoe his muse. He called called you his muse, called me his muse, he called, you know, uh, he loved actors and he knew they needed a kind of um, encouragement that was intimate. I know, I, I, and Terrence would say, you get it about me. Yeah. You get it about me. And I'd say, yes, and you get it about me. His whole, I think all of his plays are about intimacy and connection yeah. or lack thereof. Or yeah. how people miss each other. Yeah. Anyway, so pick a favorite. Oh, can't do it. Yeah. Time. I tell you, I always when I I saw you in 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 uh, master class and and uh, the other play uh, that uh, mothers and you, sons. Yeah. Oh my God, was that not extraordinary? And uh, they're always asking me, you know. Uh, what would you like to have done in your career that you've never <laughs> done before? And, uh, and I always feel like an idiot because I never feel as though I missed out on anything. But the other day, I thought about you and those two plays and I went, aha, I've got it. <laughs> so those two plays I'm reading. <laughs> so I, well, and that, I but master have class, an But Masterclass belonged to Zoe. He made it on Zoe. He yeah, imagined yeah, it I on her, and then he had the he had the he was smart enough not in, not in any devious way, but he managed to persuade me that I could do it too. And I had explained <laughs> it. I could, after I saw his play with those actors, you, you know that original production. I couldn't leave my seat. I was I was nailed yeah. to my seat in the theater. Yeah. I couldn't move, and. Um, and then he managed by some kind of alchemy to, to, to make me feel like I could do that too, which I couldn't. Yeah. Nobody can do the original one, do you know? And so then, he, and, and I had to say to Thompson as well for Mothers and Sons, he, he convinced me that it, I was the only one. And that's yeah. all an actor needs. <laughs> <laughs> to talk himself into this. Yeah. Yes. You know, there's tell no me I can do it, it. you. Yeah. But, uh, Terrence oh. loved greatness. Terrence loved actors, but he loved greatness. And he was meticulous and he had taste. And you're both humble about your craft, 
which I think is part of the key to your longevity, but he loved you authentically. He, in, in a profound way. And David, I'm very moved by what you said about our experience at Frankie and Johnny. It's startling. Oh, it was beautiful. I mean, I felt like a voyeur watching, but it was so beautiful. But I can tell you, having held his hand so many times while watching Cheetah and while watching Time, there is nothing that great, it gave him greater joy than yeah. learning more about his play than he understood from great yeah. acts. Yeah. And he was humble about that. He was modest about that. He knew that he couldn't crack what anything meant yeah. without the cheetahs and tines of the world to teach him what was oh. it. His well, soul. this is team sport. We can't do it without each other. Do you know, writing novels. Yeah, but a lot of people don't feel that time. A yes, lot of people right. think that they can do it. They th they go into the rehearsal and Maybe. they forget huh. that the writer is there. They forget the director is there. They think they can do the whole thing. They can't. That's what well, they have to learn, if they're ever going to learn it. That's why I'm really happy that I come from the chorus line. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I feel them all around me. And then I get to a Terrence McNally who's a single person and he has all those people with him. And I, uh, he makes me feel as though I'm amazing, uh, you know, <laughs> but it all comes from love. <laughs> this guy is a fan. Yeah, I always he's in love with Terrence. the whole pleasing thing. He's in yeah, love with me and he, us and him in it and all of that. He was in love with it. And so, and for that, you know, love is a pretty good basis for operation. <laughs> pretty good, pretty yeah, good. Pretty, you know, um, I I spent the day with him because it, we were going to do this conference tonight. And looking at his book, here's an ad. I don't know if you can see this uh, of the plays and reading the plays and listening to him talk about his stuff. And there's a there's a little tight. There's an exchange here to me that's so totally that guy. Um, uh, there's, it's, I think it's in this, oh, I, I marked it, lips together, teeth apart, and he says, uh, one character says together, uh, uh, gay people aren't expected to answer a question like that. And Perry says, speak for yourself. And Buzz said, I was, I usually <laughs> do. And speak for, Terrence was, he was, he was, he, he, speak for yourself, yeah. He spoke <laughs> for himself and managed to have that personal thing apply to everybody yeah yeah mm -hmm. I, it's some kind of alchemy but but then, then uh, just just to uh, I don't I just to answer the question I don't I it, fe it feels like a cop-out but I don't have a favorite either uh, but time just read from Love Valor and Love Valor is yes the play that's haunting me recently I mm -hmm. when I read his plays, which is very hard for me to do right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I, Cheetah joked earlier, the, the, the water level is way up here. I, I cry daily and I cry a lot and they're mostly tears of gratitude, but yeah. I read Love Valor recently and I was in our house in Bridgehampton, the house that it's based on. And there's just, I'm paraphrasing him, shame on me, but there's, he, the character of Gregory who owns the house says, I love to fill the house with my friends. And yeah. I, I, that is so true. And um, not- You have to write about chosen family. It was such a big thing in his writing. And I think so many of us connected to that aspect in particular. And the I, house- I, If I could just say, I'm glad you mentioned the love, valor, compassion, because I'm sorry. I just want to finish here, Jip. The house is so filled yeah. His soul and his spirit. Yeah. That He's is here right now. I, 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 <laughs> He's here right now. He's here through Marin's heart. You know, I'll never forget seeing him with Marin Maisie, you know, before she passed away. And this is her, this is this was a piece of jewelry of hers. And suddenly it jumped out at me before I came with you guys. And uh and it, it, it meant to me that he wanted to be here, that Marin wanted to be here, you know? And so, 
but he is within all of us, isn't he, really? I mean, I wouldn't be who the heck I am, <clears throat> whatever I am, without Terrence. I just wouldn't be. <clears throat> Sorry. But don't you think that's about both of you just being completely in love with the theater? Terrence is a theater writer. He, he, he didn't write, <clears throat> I mean, he, he wrote for musical theater and he wrote for uh, straight theater, but he wasn't, he didn't do movies so much or TV so much of that. He wanted to be a part, what he fell in love with as a kid yeah, was that particular kind of, of magic. And it's, I think we all feel right now, cause it's so weird that we're doing it this like this, you know, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> virtually that the reality of the theater, the being there in the same room with the people who were singing and dancing and sweating and doing whatever they're doing is still, you know, that's where uh, I felt that we agreed that that was a great place to tell stories from, as opposed to on film. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent perhaps, but I think that he accused me of being a theater animal. <laughs> you are definitely a theater animal. <laughs> uh, uh, Tom Curdy here turns out to be a theater animal, even though he was a lawyer, for God's sake. But he's a th he's a theater animal now. He needs there are worse things to be to contribute to that. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear from so Jeff. Sure. Let's hear from Jeff for a minute. Um, I'm just interested in the genesis of the documentary. Where did it start? Um, where did the idea come from? And how did you first encounter Terrence? Sure, but if I could just say one thing, which is that um, think of all the plays Terrence wrote and all the characters in all the plays. And some of the play plays are dense with characters. And yet, you know, as everyone is saying, he, he made each of those an individual person who truly came alive. He was really in all those people. Uh, and so that uh, amount of, of creation, uh, not just yeah. of, of stock figures, but of, of real people, uh, yep. to come from one person is is just a phenomenal accomplishment. And that's, I think, why I like love our compassion. It's just, as Tom was saying, you want to see it again and again and again, because those are real people that you want to reconnect with. And I, I just think yeah. um, that's just so special. Um, I agree. Yeah. There's also the fact that it is such a singular play about the AIDS pandemic. It really helped a lot of people process their grief. And I think that seeing, thinking about that play again now in, in the midst of another pandemic is very significant. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeff, tell us, about, tell us about the origins of the film. Well, I'm glad they connected me to these people. Um, uh, my my uh, producing partner, Marsha Ross and I were doing a documentary about the women, the unsung women who originated the marriage equality movement. These remarkable- I saw that film, The State of movement. Marriage, it's great. That's that's right, thank you. And we wanted to profile uh, a couple that went to Vermont when Vermont was the only place that you could have a civil union or a marriage um, and, uh, uh, and and show how it influenced people around the country. And uh, discovered that uh, Tom Curtihy, I'm pointing where you are on my screen, which, <laughs> you know, uh, Tom Curtihy uh, and Terrence McNally uh, had, had a ceremony in Vermont. So we reached out uh, to them and uh, lo and behold, they said we could interview them. And I remember, you know, saying to Marsha beforehand, you know, no one's ever done a film about Terrence McNally, uh, and he's so amazing. And Marsha is a lifelong theater geek herself. And uh, we said, you know, if if we like him, if they're if they're interesting, uh, maybe they'll let us do a documentary about him. Uh, but it turned out that they just blew us away. Tom and Terrence. And I just want to say it because I don't want to take too much time, but sitting down with Tom and Terrence and hearing this great playwright who had the right to be sort of a pompous, you know, on his <laughs> kind of person, speak about how being in love with Tom Curtie made him feel vulnerable yeah. and safe and protected was one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced in my entire life. And it taught me a lot. Yeah. Uh, and that's what led to this. Yeah. Well, I, um, <clears throat> It's kind of, uh, Tom, I, I hope I don't get you, <laughs> but um, it's kind of funny to, to see um, you without him. Uh, you know, there's some people that you think are never going to go anywhere except here, here. And Terrence was, it took me totally by surprise. And he and Tom 
were like one. They were like one. And um, I was watching TV and as we all have been do doing, what else did we do? <clears throat> and um, all of a sudden they had a list of all the people that had passed um, these past few months. And I looked up just in time to see Terrence's face. And it took me by, by I was so shocked that uh, it was as if I had not known. You know what I mean? Um, and then I realized uh, that he was here, but gone. And uh, to see Tom sitting there um, full of Terrence, you know, and himself, but I don't see Terrence beside him. And so that's my, I don't know, my crazy way of expressing my love and sadness and um, acceptance of, uh, of, of passing on, I guess, yes. you know? When I drive, I still put my hand on the driver's seat. We held oh, hands. It, 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 it is yeah. any minute we could, we were connected and I still, yeah. I, I do it instinctively and it's over three months and I, yeah. my hand is always on that seat and. Yeah, yeah. That's what Arthur and Perry did in Love, Valor, Compassion. Remember yeah. they drove with holding hands. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, that... I read that, I just. <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful in the film. Uh, when he had his hand on his thigh and he said, you, you, that's the way you always are, except he had one hand on the, on the steering wheel. And it, that's the way it is. That's what we are left with, which is huge, which is huge, but not huge enough. I'm selfish. I want it all. I want to eat it. I want to, I want to taste it. I, I want it all. And I can't get over how gorgeous Terrence was to drop <laughs> dead. I mean, I would have made such a play for him. And I, <laughs> I mean, he was so gorgeous. He was kind of Troy Donahue as a young man. He, I'm sorry? He had, that, so he had that kind of Troy Donahue, Tab Hunter look as a young man. Yeah, totally, <laughs> Very totally. Good. I mean, and he was he was that handsome as an older man because his skin was always pink and clear and beautiful. And that smile and those eyes, they squinted when they smiled. They opened wide when he was trying to do my, my hands. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, but he was always, uh, he was always beautiful. He was, a, but God almighty, as a young man, he was to die from. <laughs> I'm so horny all the time. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that. That's Cheers. Me. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Tom, it must have been very gratifying for you watching the film to, uh, to just see so many great artists giving credit to your husband for the incredibly pivotal role that he had played in their careers. And, you know, mm -hmm. some of them no longer with us, like James Coco, Doris Roberts, and the, the beautiful. Marin Mazzi, Cheetah mentioned, but also people who are still such vital forces in the entertainment field, Christine Baranski, Nathan Lane, Audra, um, Joe Mantello, in terms of his transition from actor to director, Terence is very instr instrumental in that. Um, he was such an incredible force, not just in his own work, but in what he could bring out in other people. Now, I wonder of all the people that he gave a boost to through his career, was there anyone in particular you think he was particularly proud of? Uh, n n no, um, because he, he, he had a, as evidenced by this call, he had a big, big heart. And I don't think he knew how to prioritize love. I think he, if he fell in love with you, he fell hard and <laughs> had talent crushes that, you know, I, I, I like, when I read Frankie and Johnny, I think, oh, this is the play that's, um, and Terrence is Johnny. No, Terrence is Frankie. No, Terrence is Perry. No, Terrence is Buzz. I, but 
whether it's Cheetah or Tyne or Joe or Audra or Nathan, there was never a, a, a list so much as deep awe. Uh, and he yeah. really had great taste. He was a complete talent whore. And yeah. he loved talent. And he fell in love with it all the time. He talks I mean, about- There's a funny story about, about you know, having these relationships with theaters, with directors, with actors, and 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 just falling head over he he was curious about them. He wanted intimacy with a lot of people. And it wasn't about being uh in any way, you know, flighty or cheap or going from person to person. He was just no, totally engaged with I, who's I, next. I, and he, he talks about, you know, relationship wanting there to be a new director. He talked about that up until, uh, I think, uh, Anastasia, you know, to take a chance on a director he didn't know very well. Um, to, to, or, or with, with- um, Which he did with Darko Tresniak in, in Anastasia, right? Yeah, to, to feel that he wasn't challenging himself until he, he tried to work with another group of artists and see what they would bring. You know, but he, it, wasn't, he, it wasn't air kisses. It that, wasn't. No, no, no. It was. It was just naked curiosity. <laughs> I think in the middle of the night. Fascinating. David, to say, David, in the middle of the night. What do you get from my story, and how can we take this story, you know, to the people, with with uh, other points of view? In this book, I'm sorry to go back to it, but he talk, You know, he talks about being every all the characters in Lips Together, Keith the Bird, yeah. and yet having Masterclass be his most intimate play. It was right. the most about him. The in most the, personal play, in but the they were of the night the one night. Amusing as they were all personal plays. <laughs> Terrence jumped up in the middle of the night one night and screamed, "Time daily!" And I, <laughs> I, he woke me up and I said, "You, you know, do that. You I, do that all I, the time. I love." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I love her too, honey." But are you trying to tell me something? But, uh, <laughs> and uh, he said, "Time daily masterclass," and we knew we were doing it at the Kennedy Center. And it was probably June thirtieth because we can't. We I had to track down her cell phone, and we called you on the fifth of July on um, Andrew right? Wilson Day, and um, that began that journey. But Terrence, Terrence loved actors. He he um, spoke at the State Department on behalf of Cheetah when she got her Kennedy Center honor, and I'll never forget that speech, Cheetah. It was. It's on my wall. It I was, have it's on my wall. <laughs> You know, Colin Powell was like fangirling over Terrence. He was just, you know, <laughs> yeah, he was. Year, you know. You know what I loved? I loved in the film because Terrence had such a, a wonderful feeling for the theater, everything about the theater. That one shot of him alone on that stage looking out at the theater is such, when I think of it, I am so moved because it is huge. It says so much about the man and about the theater and about the craft and how serious he was about it. Um, so I, I just wanted to tell you uh, how beautiful I thought that, that shot was of, of Terrence. Can I actually um, jump in. Up on that and ask a question, perhaps starting with Tom? If you don't mind, David, um, Not at all. that you know we're talking about Terrence and the theater, <laughs> but this is such a challenging time, and Terrence is so connected to to um, where we are as a, as a culture and as a people. Um, how did Terrence feel about taking his work off the stage? Well, how was it important for him to not just be locked on the stage, but go beyond that to life? You know what I mean, Tom? I'm not sure I do. I'm sorry. Uh, Politically, socially, moving people, oh, changing people. Well, I think, um, David, you spoke so beautifully about Andre's mother. And um, we were doing a, a play in Philadelphia, and uh, this woman waited outside the theater. And she sort of stopped Terrence and said, Mr. McNally, can I talk to you? And he said, Sure, and you know it was a preview of something that wasn't going well. So we were all we were a little ready to go to a note session, and this woman said, "I, I really, Mr. McNally, I want to introduce you to my daughter, um, and I have to say thank you um, because 
my daughter and my son came out to my husband and me and we rejected them. We threw them out of the house. And when we saw Andre's mother, we looked at each other and said, we have to call them. And they, so we met mother and daughter. We subsequently met the, her husband and the daughter's wife and the, the gay son. And they all came to the opening of Mothers and Sons on Broadway. Wow. Wow. But the Terence, Terence was a truth teller and he lived fearlessly. He was never closeted ever, ever, ever. And um, I think he was so um, happy about where we had come, but crushed by where we've been these past few years. And um, before, you know, Terrence died on March 24th and um, before George Floyd, and but he was reading, reading White Fragility. He was watching what was happening in this country with horror and deep, deep sadness. And I think um, there were no, there was nothing that satisfied him more than someone in the back of the theater saying, Mr. McNally, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? Um, mm -hmm. you, you made me feel more alive or you saved me in some way. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it's my job to make sure that the work and the sort of open heartedness and kindness of his work continues to get celebrated and seen and, and heard because we can't take anything for granted. We, we, I think mm -hmm. as a country, as a, as a society, we've learned we can take nothing for granted. Yeah. Um, so I think that what you're saying also, Tom, is, uh, you know, that's such a central part of his legacy, uh, the pioneering work that he did in terms of gay representation at a time when there was minimal cultural visibility, particularly in the commercial theater. But he helped people kick down the closet door. He helped parents accept their children. He fought for marriage equality later. He helped to destigmatize AIDS. Um, you know, he did so much work helping people to celebrate their chosen families, to embrace what was different about them instead of being afraid of it. And I think that is an incredible legacy to leave behind, but it's obviously just a part of, of what he was. But, you know, how I think that relates to his plays, and one of the things I love about them is how completely unapologetic, unembarrassed, there's no puritanical coyness about them in the, the way that they deal with sex and desire. And I think that can only come from someone who has <coughs> sexuality, who's been completely comfortable with who he is from a very young age, way before people were out of the closet, you know, before Stonewall, before he was writing about gay men, he was putting gay men's lives out there in a way to help people understand, to sort of take away the otherness. And I think that's a tremendous legacy. Um, but I don't know if any of you have particular feelings about what precisely you think the Terence McNally legacy is or if it can be defined. Well, I, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, I, I, I hope I'm kind of accurate here. Um, I think his um, love of the theater is, is a pure example of his love of life because the theater is alive as opposed, you know, to film and TV and all of that. Um, it, it's happening at the moment. It is real. It is, um, it has electricity in it as we have when we're walking down the street and having a conversation with somebody. Um, so I, I think his interpretation of being in the theater is how he felt about life, period. Because that's exactly the way I feel. I feel every word that I am responsible for every word that comes out of my mouth, I am responsible for. Um, that's, why, that's how you kind of uh, keep track of yourself. Um, you hear yourself. You see yourself, you feel yourself. Uh, I don't want to make 
too many mistakes because I don't want to go back and clean it up. You know, <laughs> so I think Terrence's love of life is his, his love of the theater is his love of life. Does that make any sense to you? Because yes. it, and, and also, I, 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 yeah, I think I, I'm going to say again um, <clears throat> that I think all the work is about intimacy. Mm -hmm. The intimacy right. between any kinds of people, any kind of sexuality, any kind of relationship, men and women, grandmas and, and sons, uh, that it's about how we get closer to each other and how we, we understand each other better and how we start to translate each other's uh, uh, speech so we understand each other. I, you know, yeah. you, you keep saying, am I making any sense? Am I, am I, you know, yeah, we, we want the effort to try and connect. And yeah. every single play is about that. And there was a thing about, in a, a thing that amused me today, because I spent the day with Terrence, about an, a, an interviewer wanting him to, to analyze what he was doing in a certain play. I, I, I think maybe it was past, it was later than Ganesh. But he said, I can't, I don't want to an analyze it because I'm still doing it. I can't. <laughs> sit back and tell you what this is about because I'm still doing it. And he was still doing it right up until I talked to you guys, uh, Tom, uh, when you were on your way driving down to Florida. He was still questioning, I should be working more, I should be writing more, there's a play in me somewhere. You know, he, the impulse to, to try to communicate with each other and therefore love each other. And I think all the plays are about that. Um, um. <laughs> Beautifully said, time. Tom, um, the, I'm, I'm curious about the, the part in the documentary where after the lung cancer battle that he just became incredibly prolific and produced so much new work in the short span of time. It reminds me of the line in Hamilton, why do you write like you're running out of time? And mm -hmm. you think it was a sense of mortality that was driving him? I, th I think that was a piece of it, definitely, David. I think, um, I think, uh, Terence uh, felt like he was having a third act. And um, I think that he felt safe. I like to believe that he felt safer in the world. Um, it, it's, it's awkward to say, but we were, we were just madly in love. And um, I think that inspired him to, to to be more curious and um, but I think very definitely mortality the played a role in um, his insistence in putting into words what was in his mind and in his heart and uh, one thing that young theater artists have said to me repeatedly since his passing is they were amazed at how often he went to the theater. I mean, he would, yeah. he would go to an off, 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 off Broadway yeah. show. He would be in Brooklyn or Queens or New Jersey or uh, anywhere downtown. He just, he loved, he considered theaters to be a sacred space and he loved seeing what the next generation and the next generation was saying and doing. And he was, you know, he had a wicked sense of humor. He was wonderfully naughty, but he was so giving and really loved to feel envy or jealousy because he thought that was the of excellence. You know, if, if, if something made him jealous, it meant he loved it. <laughs> and it was a healthy form of jealousy because it was more. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I'm so the opposite. When I, when I heard him say, um, I, you know, I don't really understand how, how actors don't go to see other plays. They seldom go to the theater. Well, that's the way I am. I am dreadful. I want it to be me. <laughs> I want that to be <laughs> me up there. I want to talk to you. You know what I mean? I, and I, and I knew exactly what he meant because I commented on it as he said it. Uh, I said, I'm guilty for sure. Um, but of course I, I do, but not, not as often 
as Terrence would like me to, you know? So. I think that's We're not hearing enough from, Je from Jeff. I'm just curious, you, you have, you know, a documentary maker's <laughs> dream list of, of talking heads and the, even the interviewees listed on the end credits that didn't make the final cut is pretty damn impressive. I just wonder, were you, were you surprised by people's eagerness to participate and was there anyone you really had to coax hard? Well, I think Tom and Terrence did the coaxing. Um, you know, I, I've known Tyne for years, so so I, I wasn't nervous about interviewing Tyne, although I, I, I know she always says something wonderful. I, I, I think one of the people I was most nervous interviewing was Rita, um, it was, 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 was Cheetah. Because... You did not say that. <laughs> you didn't say that. What did I say? <laughs> oh. You called me Rita. Did I really? <laughs> That, no, I'm laughing. So, someone, someone wants to joke. Someone told me never do that, and so there you go. But anyway, no, but you, but there's a wonderful song out. I yeah. read it, not cheetah. So yeah. I'm. Yeah, sure. Someone once I remember someone once said never do that. So every once in a while that says the nevers. Uh, but no, <laughs> but she, cheetah. I was I was nervous about interviewing you because I just thought of you as this legend, and I and um and it, it was such uh and I thought you know, um, what would she be like? And I was just, and it was a lesson for me that someone who you've admired for so long and see on stage and, and has such stature can also be such a down to earth, wonderful person. And I mean, I know wow. that's just kind of the simplest thing, but I remember sitting in this booth, you know, we were at this restaurant interviewing you and I just had this little <laughs> light go off and I, and I, because I, yeah. And it was just a wonderful human thing for me. Um, oh, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah, I I am so basic. It's uh, it's embarrassing, really. Well, of course, her reputation. You know, she's an incredibly difficult broad. Everyone has a terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and that's we have a question from somebody like watching, um, Pat uh, from Robert, who in the audience. And it's a question for Tom, but can go to everyone. So, what do you want all of us theater geeks to do to honor Terence's legacy today, tomorrow, and the day thereafter? I'll tell you, uh, November 3rd is Terrence's birthday, and it's also election day. And ah. you can vote. You can <laughs> vote, vote, vote. Absolutely. And I'm not saying to vote for Trump. I'm saying to vote for Joe Biden and end this misery. Oh, and flip the Senate while you're at it. In our nation. Yeah. Uh, I want to say, I want to cheat, and I want to say one thing. I, I just, Jeff has made a movie that got it right. And we were yeah. terrified that he wouldn't. And Terrence's life was so large and there are pieces of it that couldn't be addressed. But I really want to publicly say thank you to Jeff because he got it right. Nobody watches that movie and says, that's not Terrence. No. Uh, it, it's quite the opposite. People, can I, can I say- he was, just, he was just following Terrence's lead. Terrence is the man who took ragtime, an incredible, unwieldy, <laughs> project and and formed it into something that was tellable in an evening in the theater. So it's just, just he's, a, he's copying. He's just copying. This is too big to talk about and yet he managed to to give it some wonderful shape and it was fun it's to a, be part of. It's a chance to say to you, Tom, because Marsha and I sat down with you at this booth in a restaurant as well and talked to you about this idea and you said you'd go talk to, to Terrence about it. Um, and you took a chance on us. Um, and the there's so many I, I hope people who are watching this will go read more of Terrence's work and experience more of Terrence's work and and and, and take the lessons from it and ex, and and put it into their lives uh, but that's what you've done for us you're saying yes you're trusting us it was life-changing for for both of us and for all of us and you know I just I can't thank you enough okay so we need to wrap up as close to nine as we can but I'm going to throw one last question out for everybody um Terence did you know, so much work that I think will continue to resonate forever, but we are in a particularly insane time right now with the country more divided than ever, this resurgence of racism, of you know, hateful intolerance of anything that smacks of otherness. Uh, we're in the midst of a pandemic that has made us fearful of human contact. I just wonder for all of you, which particular work of Terence's would speak loudest and clearest in a beautiful revival right now? I've been feeling very sad, like all of us have in this last period. There's been a lot of loss of friends, of 
acquaintances, anyway. Um, so looking for comfort, looking for consolation. He, he was a consoler. I would look at all of the work because his, his life's work was consoling people that felt friendless, homeless, marginalized, unrecognized. Take a look. This is, my impulse has been, I want to go to the elders. Um, and, and, and Terrence is one of our legitimate elders. I've been thinking, you know, where is Ruby D and, and Ozzy Davis? I want to confer with the elders at this period of time. And I'm pretty elderly myself. But I'm, and I, I look to Terrence as one of the real um, teachers about us, all of us. I think the word is leader, maybe. You think that word, leader? Mm -hmm. I, I would desperately love, uh, I know I'm not answering the question, but I would desperately love to be able to go uh, to, to know that there is someone that I can go to that will give me some um, advice, some calming, giving, sharing, loving advice. But I think this time, uh, as far as the play is concerned, I don't really know. You know, I, 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 I don't have any really great suggestion except Spider Woman. <laughs> or, Spider -Woman. Or, Definitely. We're way overdue for a revival of that show. Well, I, I, I think as much as Terrence loved opera, I mean, he adored his music. Uh, I'm glad that I was the one that more or less um, interpreted uh, an awful lot of his uh, his pieces uh, through music and dance. Uh, so I'm I'm glad that I was ready, willing, and able at the time and chosen at the time. But as far as uh, Tom, what what play would you? I, I get an email, a text, a phone call a day uh, with someone saying, this is the one you have to do it. This is, you know, Ganesh, yeah. or Ragtime or, yeah. or Frankie, you know, I, it's- I mean, Ragtime is, Ragtime is Black Lives Matter. It's, it's immigration. It's That's all true. we're That's talking true. about now. It's such a great show. Yeah. I will say, Tommy, I wanted to tell Never you, that, did, I try, did I try it the other day? I did. And one of the things I did was look at the speech from, is it 17? When were we, when were we nominated for Mothers and Sons? The, the uh, Why I Walk for AIDS. Yeah, the, oh, the GMHC, the AIDS The walk? GMHC, that speech <laughs> is a knockout. You could just do that. Go to, go to, to uh, YouTube. <laughs> right, and look at, at Terrence at the, at the uh, AIDS rally of, was it 17? Yeah, part of it is in Jeff's film. Yeah. Yes, it is. But the whole thing, which I looked at the other day, you know, I'm hanging out there looking like a doofus, but he was just, he was just so clear and so honest and so saying, why do I do what I do? Because, because I have to, <laughs> which is pretty good for the young minds to know. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well I, think that, I think that's that scene in Spider Woman with Brent and uh, Carver and Anthony Crivello in that tiny little yeah. jail cell. And these two people that were totally the opposite had, had to, like we are forced to with the pandemic right now, I mean, had that. to get- I said to that know. to a friend today, exactly that. The Absolutely. And they were so beautiful, those two guys. And when it finally, Terrence wrote it so that you see it happening, you see the necessity, you see the understanding, you see the need for them to, 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 be, to, to understand each other because they have to survive with each other. And then of course, the end when they love each other, actually love each other. I, thank you. I, I'm glad you asked that question because um, that scene came up um, and the, the two guys were, were beautiful and, and Terrence wrote a gorgeous scene. So I think that's good, isn't it? Wasn't it, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I always have to get an okay. <laughs> um, may, maybe you should wrap us up. I mean, I'm just, Curious to know 
that in these difficult months since Terence uh, left us, has there been any particular encounter, any particular thing that someone has said to you that has helped you absorb the loss? Um, I don't know that uh, there's something, anything that someone has said, but several people have said, watching the two of you together made me want to love more. And that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's gotta be something good to hold on to. That'll keep you going for a while, kid. Yeah. Anyway, we're all with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank absolutely. you all so much. This has been so great to hear everybody, um, to listen to you reminisce, talk about him. It really um, brings him alive again. And I hope that he'll continue to be celebrated in his work in Jeff's fabulous documentary. I hope anyone who hasn't seen it will take the time to go to PBS and watch it while it's streaming for you. <laughs> And uh, it's it's a great it's a great watch. It's a fabulous tribute, and it's for anyone who loves the theater. It's just so alive with all of that, and with all of the compassion, the love that was in his work. Um, anyway, thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank, been you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. I love you. I love you too.